Zalto. <clears throat> hey, Darren, how you doing, buddy? All right, let's get Kurt on here. There he is. Hey. Hey, buddy. How are you? Terrific. And the puppy and you. Yep. And the new, the new puppy, Zalto. Oh, it's Zalto. <laughs> not, not Riedel. No, no. But uh, currently not using the Zaltos around her for, you know, all safety purposes. <laughs> uh, That's good. Yeah. So yeah, just letting people people jump on here and we'll get rolling. So uh, how are you? Really good. Uh, busy time of year. Um, gosh, so much happening in the vineyard. We're we're cutting grass. You know, the the cover crop is growing like crazy, and, and uh, we've been shoot thinning for a couple weeks now already. And then the <clears throat> and the winery, we're topping barrels. It's just. Uh, it's a busy, busy and fun yeah. time here. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I'm glad you're glad you're safe and doing well and you're healthy. I am. Yeah. Uh, maybe a, a silver lining to this this quarantine, at least for me. Um, it's just been a wonderful time for exercise, and so oh, I, feel, yeah. I actually I actually feel very healthy. Yeah. And eating yeah, well. As, yeah. As, same as you as you and I talked. I mean, I cook cook healthy dinners at home and riding my bike and running like crazy. So I don't think I've ever been able to be this active. <laughs> yeah. So that's good. That's good. All right. So uh, thanks to everybody who's jumping on. We got uh, tonight's Instagram live is with uh, Kurt Beitler of Bohem Wines. And uh, we're going to taste uh, two wines tonight together. The new vintage of um, 2016 uh, Taylor uh, Vineyard Chardonnay and 2016 uh, English Hill Pinot Noir. So, uh, but before we get into wines, Kurt, just give us just a kind of a quick rundown on Boheme and 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 kind of what your mission is with that and the wines, etc. Sure, sure. And um, well, I, I suppose the uh, I truly wouldn't be uh, making wine today if it weren't for my own family history, deeper history with winemaking in California. I'm actually a fifth generation uh, vintner. Um, probably the biggest step into winemaking for my family was uh, when, when my grandparents with my uncle Chuck uh, Wagner founded Camus uh, Vineyards in the early 70s, I think 1972. <clears throat> so I kind of grew up around wine. Um, uh, my parents, I think, after come in there i can you see me now again yep you're good just froze for a second but all is well yeah i i should find a way to turn my my phone off but i just um, I, I just put it in do not disturb and then that doesn't happen oh is there is there a do not disturb uh on your home button of the iphone uh it's on the i don't know i do a little swipey thing and there's a moon i don't know yeah well if we get another one then i'll, I'll navigate that but anyway uh so, so I, I really did uh, uh, have an early impression uh, of wine growing. Um, and I think uh, finally it, it started to really cement in my college years. And then uh, I, I kind of was working summers, did a little bit of, of climate research and trying to correlate uh, soils and weather to high quality uh, wines. Uh, that was primarily Napa Valley and, and a little bit Sonoma Coast. But then finally, after uh, uh, college, my uncle, Chuck, uh, uh, encouraged me and, and, and gave me a, a great opportunity to, uh, to manage a vineyard for him out on the Sonoma Coast near the town of Occidental. Um, <clears throat> it's actually where I am right now. It's, a, it's an absolutely beautiful place. Uh, so I, I cut my teeth. That would have been... Uh, the very beginning of 2000 and I, <clears throat> I learned it, uh, to grow grapes and, and, uh, viticulture and, and just slowly, uh, uh, learned about winemaking for a couple of years. And then I, I made, uh, 
I think in 01 and 02, a, a barrel each year of, of Cabernet from Napa Valley uh, for fun, home wine. Um, and then finally, uh, it would have been 2004, uh, a neighbor down the road had a, a wonderful Syrah vineyard and he approached me about leasing it and farming it. And uh, I decided to make my, my first commercial wine uh, uh, from that vineyard. So that was, that was really neat. So, um, so Boem, I, I named my winery brand Boem, uh, uh, not, not for uh, the opera La Boem, like some might think, but in fact, uh, there's a, a beautiful local road near Occidental called the Bohemian Highway. Um, I might be a little bit Bohemian, but uh, really, it's a it's a reference to the place. Uh, um, so the the vineyards where I'm involved and in, and in growing uh, are are generally just to the west between Occidental and and uh, the ocean, uh, not far from the Bohemian Highway. Awesome. Uh, you are a, you are a big time opera fan, but that's not what the wine is named after. <laughs> it's it's true, Ryan. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. So yeah. So. Um, Yes, yeah, so hopefully folks are, are pretty familiar with uh, the Boem wines. Um, we're going to start off with the uh, 16 Taylor Chardonnay, and I'm assuming that's the vineyard you're sitting in? Uh, just down the road. It's, it's uh, maybe an eighth of a mile to my west. Um, so, the, so the Taylor Ridge vineyard was planted by... Uh, my dear friend Vincent Rego, um, who owns the vineyard, and and I'm lucky to be able to lease it from him, and farm it and make the wine. Uh, he made in the this would be the late '90s when planting the vineyard some really fantastic decisions about uh, clonal selection. Um, uh, absolutely, this this Chardonnay I I love, and I and I probably wouldn't be be so excited about it if it weren't for this old Wenty selection uh, plant material. So the berries are, are, are just uh, tiny at the time of harvest and uh, we get a, a small crop. Uh, I think we, we seldom get over two tons per acre, <clears throat> but the mouthfeel and uh, the aromatics and the nuance in the wine are, are, I think they're just unique and pretty special. And it's probably because of that low yielding old Wenty. Yeah. Right. Cool. So I use, um, I would characterize as uh, a traditional Burgundian winemaking technique with, with these wines. This is whole cluster pressed uh, and, and barrel fermented. We're using um, only French oak barrels. Uh, however, with the Chardonnays, I've, I've found that uh, a, a mix of, of one to three year old uh, barrels tends to be about the right amount of oak influence, um, especially since I like to age the wines over vintage. So these are bottling at 18, 19, 20 months. So a little extra time in barrel. Um, and and y you might be surprised, actually. Uh, a one or two year old barrel after a year and a half can can give quite a lot of flavor to a wine. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so this is so obviously kind of Boem obviously specializes in Sonoma Coast wines. Um, this is the most westerly, am I correct, or is Stellar the most the most closest? Is Taylor the closest to the ocean? Uh, uh, yeah, of my vineyards, it is. It's uh, I think it's right at five miles from Bodega Bay. Yeah. So and and uh, so being closer to the ocean, uh, we have cooler temperatures uh, at this vineyard, so it's slower ripening process. Uh, so they they every year turn out to be the last grapes that we pick, at least for for Pinot and Chardonnay. Um, and I I think maybe the texture. Uh, possibly in the Chardonnay is, is a bit more delicate than our other Chardonnay, the English Hill Vineyard, probably because of that, that ripening time. So what, uh, what flavors are you getting, Ryan? 
What yeah, I love like it. About the wine. Yeah, I love it. Really nice, really nice acidity. Just you know, nice um, you know tropical fruit notes on the wine. It smells like the ocean air. Yeah, I I I love the 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 crisp, uh, almost lemon citrus. Yeah, in the wine, but then um, still a good good density uh, or medium <clears throat> density on the on the palate and finish. Um, so it's a it's a I like the wine because it's a it's a full and complete Chardonnay. It's it's not thin, um, but but mouth watering and delicious. Yeah, it's super, yeah, it's just super light, super super juicy. You can definitely tell it's, you know, a cooler a cooler climate vineyard site, um, just from the acidity in the wine. And um, now, does this does it go through 100% Mallow? I in some years we we have difficulty ha having all the wine go through Malic. I think uh, this vintage 16 is a is a complete malolactic fermentation. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, great wine. So it's a it's a small vineyard. Uh, uh, you're probably aware that at the Taylor Ridge property we have both Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. It's about two and a quarter acres of of the Chardonnay, and then I I think uh, something like two point seven of the of the Pinot Noir, which is uh, all uh, Swan selection uh in in the pinot uh block awesome yeah 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 and this is and so this is this is obviously current release of this uh of this wine correct yeah we have just a tiny uh tiny bit left um 17s are bottled uh but not yet released gotcha yeah, yeah. but it was a, this was a you know 16 <clears throat> was was the second in a row of of two uh, small crop drought years, you know, 15 and 16 were minuscule yields. Right. Um, I think we did, uh, just a, a hair over one ton per acre, uh, from, from the 16 Taylor. Oh, wow. Uh, which was, and, and, and I think that gave us, uh, about 140 cases only. Yep. So that's it's, right. It's, yeah. It's 100, a, 147 on the back of the bottle. So yeah. So pretty small, pretty small production on this one for sure. Yeah. All right. So anything else, uh, anything else to say on the tailor? The ta uh, yeah, you kind of talked about the winemaking and all that kind of stuff. Other than that, we'll move on to talking about the English Hill Vineyard and, and sipping on a little Pinot Noir. Sure. I assume, Ryan, you're swallowing and not spitting, yes? I, I don't spit wine pretty much ever. Your mother raised you well. That's right. So yeah, so 2016, uh, English Hill, Pinot Noir, and um, Kurt, so yeah, so this is obviously another Sonoma Coast vineyard, and this is a vineyard site, uh, the, one, the one that you work with that you actually planted yourself, correct? Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, <laughs> I think I planted the, the rootings uh, in late 04, um, it's about a nine acre vineyard in the, uh, southwest corner of, of the Sonoma coast AVA. Um, honestly, when, when I was planting this vineyard, I, I really didn't have a, uh, a, a great handle on, on what clones or, or selections of Pinot Noir, uh, were my favorite. Uh, I think I was still still really developing my my education about Pinot Noir, frankly, uh, and 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 so I, I think I uh, re relied on my my education and and economics and, and appreciation for uh, diversification. So I had uh, actually five different uh, uh, selections of Pinot Noir that we grafted on the rootstock. In hindsight, it was it was kind of a, a, a lucky and, and serendipitous decision uh, because I absolutely love what the the complexity of having the different elements and, and flavor and texture uh, from from those variety of, of clones what they give to the wine, right? Really good. So we've got a 
um, there, there are two Dijon clones, which are, are 115 and 667. Those are the, the biggest uh, uh, parts of the vineyard. Um, then there's a, a section of Calera, uh, and then a, um, a Von Romani uh, selection that a, another winemaker a friend brought uh brought over the pond and then another little little tiny area of, of some material that i that i uh i carried over and and so it's pretty it's it's pretty fun to to make a little, make the little suitcase suitcase importing <laughs> off the books yes so yeah i uh the english hill in the in the portfolio of, of the boam pinos i i i love it so much because of it's it's earth and savory and and kind of pleasant vegetal uh like wild grass expression um it's just uh it, ha it has so many layers and 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 it and it just develops and it's just kind of mouth-watering and um i've i've been very very happy and kind of touched that it turned out to be a uh, a really good vineyard when in the beginning that, that certainly wasn't uh something i i knew for sure would be the case right wow. yeah yeah i mean having you know tasted through all many vintages of all the different vineyard sites you know taylor is always kind of the the most lifted high toned you know the pinot anyway more you know brighter fruit and then i always find that english hill is a little bit more mushroomy earthy um al says pine needles on here and i definitely get a little bit of like an evergreen component on here for sure yeah yeah, but yeah, I've always found English Hill to be a little bit more, a little bit, little more mushroomy and earthy, earthy wine of the three vineyard sites. Yeah, I would agree. It's, uh, um, it happens to be uh, just, I, I think, within a, a hundred miles, uh, or excuse me, a hundred yards of the the Sonoma Coast and Russian River valley boundary line and it, and it okay. happens, happens to be just within the russian river uh also it's it's in both appalachians i think we chose we chose to mark it as a sonoma coast because it tends to have a more coastal expression um but um i'll tell you when when the the incredible wind and fog uh blow over it it uh it is the warmest of the three vineyard sites uh, so we picked these grapes earlier than the tailor or the stoller right um and uh so yeah i have uh we have a lot of fun making this wine and every, you know every year we'll we'll decide to uh combine a, a couple different sections of the vineyard so we're doing a co-fermentation of different clones and then and then you can't help but uh, but wonder okay well what if we keep this cholera uh, all alone and 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 age it uh, by itself will will have its own you know you, what, what what will we learn about cholera that way especially at that site so um, at at the at the end of the the aging process when we're making a barrel selection for bottling uh, it's it's really uh, literally a, a matter of laying the all of the barrels down on the, the floor of the cellar uh and you, you got a, a a glass and a thief in one hand and a and a stick of chalk in the other and and we'll make uh marks on the barrels you know what what are uh the outstanding characteristics and and attributes of of that specific barrel and and uh with the hope that it would lend something positive to the overall blend and, and then at the end it's it's really the favorites that are assembled and uh and so it's a it's every year a, a big mix of clones and i think that's maybe one of the reasons the wine has such a a, a broad expression of not just the texture but you know the the aromatics and you mentioned mushroom and you know i lo i just love the the vegetal part of the wine part partly also from from the whole cluster i think we we include about 30 percent uh whole cluster on average with the English okay, yeah. yeah, I was just about to ask you that. So 30% whole cluster and then kind of the barrel program is is all all neutral wood. There's not any, not any new oak on this wine, is there? There is actually, yeah. What oh, is there? Uh, it would be starting around uh, 20, I think it was 2015. So just the, the vintage prior to this. 
Okay. Uh, I, I decided to trial uh, a small percentage of, of new Burgundy barrels, and I, and I loved it. Um, and I think, uh, I think by 2016, uh, at least this wine is about 20% uh, new French. So, so there is a there is a bit of of oak, and and I like to think that it's a complimentary uh, amount. Um, yeah, it's definitely like thought it might be neutral. Yeah, I thought it might be all neutral. So I don't. Yeah, it definitely has some nice some nice spice components that you know more than likely is coming from barrel, but um, definitely not overly done. I, yeah, I would. I would if you'd have told me it was you know two years or older barrels, I'd have been like, okay, I believe you. So. Well, well, part of that, you know, uh, barrel selection, if, if, if one is going to uh, include new barrels in the program, you, you really need to have a clear idea of, of what you want from those barrels. Uh, you know, I think some wineries embrace uh, a bit more spice and toast and, and those vanilla flavors that can come from a higher toast barrel or an American oak barrel. Uh, but the impression of a barrel can be much more restrained with a lower toast uh, or, or certain, certain forests uh, with these, these French barrels. So, um, you know, a new barrel uh, isn't a new barrel, isn't a new barrel per se. Right. That's uh, true. So, That's true. Yeah. 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 So definitely, the, you know, the wine is just, as all your wines always are, they're just really well integrated and well-rounded and don't really have any, I, I never find your wines to ever have any rough edges or things. I can hear you. All right. I think you just came back. Somebody for, calling well, for well, campaign well, campaign donations or something? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, that's that's some that's some fine praise, uh, Ryan. That's uh, certainly one of my objectives I'm, I'm looking to uh, release wines that have uh, a, a good amount of, of tannin and texture so they will have longevity and they will be food friendly uh, but you know the, they they also can't be too coarse uh, the wines need to be friendly and and likable and delicious uh, so you, you sort of toe the line. Uh, everyone has their their aesthetic uh, preference, but uh, you know what, what's what's the right degree of, of ripeness, and how long do we let the grapes uh, hang on the vine, and and what's what's the potential alcohol on the wine? All of these uh, affect uh, your experience with the wine. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, and what, um, if you said it, I'm sorry, I, I, I missed it, but what, what year did you plant the English Hill Vineyard? Uh, it was, it was November of 04. Uh, okay. And when, when the, when we planted the rootstock, uh, so they were, they were, these are dormant, uh, okay. rootings. And, uh, so they stayed dormant through the winter and then, and then came out, uh, that spring of 05, we let them grow uh, and mature through that, uh, 2005 growing season. They went dormant again that, uh, that fall. And then finally in the, the following spring of 06, that's when we were grafting. Uh, so that was, that was the key moment, uh, deciding, okay, how much, how many of, of these, uh, beautiful baby vines will be Chardonnay or, uh, how, how much do we want for Pinot Noir? And I couldn't help myself because I love Syrah uh actually planted uh it's about a quarter acre of of syrah yeah uh and it's it's so so good uh, yeah but uh just bar barely ripens but it's a gorgeous gorgeous wine yeah it really is so, yeah so taylor you have chardonnay taylor vineyard site you have ta uh chardonnay and pinot noir english hill vineyard site also chardonnay pinot noir and then in addition uh syrah as well all coming out of english hill right Yes, that's right. And then the the Stoller Vineyard is is only Pinot Noir. We just have a couple Dijon selections there, one one five and six six seven. Right, right. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So what else? Anything else? Anything else exciting about uh, that vineyard, or anything else exciting Boheme? Or oh, what to say? Uh, there, there's so so many things happening all the time. Um, 
I mean, today, like the the, day, the days will go by so fast you don't know what what you did. I mean, I've I've spent uh, I spent time on the on the tractor today. Uh, we're we're trying to clear out uh, uh, grasses that are growing from underneath the the vines with with this this wonderful uh, farm implement we have. It's a Clemens radius. That was just down the road, and then. Um, I was with a couple a couple dear friends at the winery earlier, tasting tasting through some barrels uh, with, with nice. uh, Seth Kripe and and Dean Joiner and and uh, kind of all over the place. Um, but uh, other news uh, uh, for the project, um, I'm not sure we have it in Tennessee yet. But uh, here a couple months ago, we released uh, a new Appalachian blend. Um, called the West Pole, so it'll be it'll be fun to send you some samples and 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 see if that's something we could be working with in Tennessee. Um, yeah, is yeah. that a, and is is that a uh, Pinot Noir blend of different vineyard sites? Yeah, exactly. It's it's uh, so following the barrel the barrel selection uh, for the the Boheme 2017 Pinot Noir, uh, I was left with. Uh, um, a number of other really good barrels that I, I couldn't stand the idea of, of selling away on the bulk market. I mean, these are all estate grown, uh, uh precious wines. And right. uh, so decided to keep the favorites of those to make one larger Appalachian blend. Uh, so I think it was something like 700 cases, but oh, it's, neat. It's, a, it's a little, uh, uh, I think it's only a couple or a few percent, uh, new Oak about, uh, 30 percent whole cluster so it has really wonderful texture and and tannin and and uh aromatics but uh that'll be a that'll be a, a fun one to introduce to yeah that sounds, yeah it's, yeah it sounds like you have a bit of it a uh, bit of it to sell so yeah that'd be awesome to try to try to move some of that in tennessee that'd be a fun new addition yeah um and then uh i suppose on the on the retail side we we've got uh we have our wine club uh, so we're just this coming week, we're going to be uh, announcing to all of our club members the, the spring uh, allocation and what wines we're going to be including in there. <clears throat> I think it'll be a, a vertical of uh, 14, 15, 16 uh, vintage Pinots uh, from, from the three different vineyards. Uh, and then I think this Chardonnay, probably also the English Hill Chardonnay and a Syrah, it's going to be a a pretty fun mix of wines nice yeah and so yeah so obviously when we first started working together you were doing that um kind of the original bohem syrah which we were just insane about loved it um the new one the which is the occidental which is coming out of english hill correct that's that's exactly right yeah and is, and is that continuing you're you're continuing on with that occidental syrah out of the english hill vineyard site yeah yes well and it's it's a uh, it's a pretty small kind of special project. Uh, I think we seldom do over a hundred cases of it. Mm. Uh, I mean, the vineyard block is so small, uh, about a quarter acre. So we're we're lucky if we can get four barrels out of that. But uh, for a, a a cool climate, kind of slow, long ripening season, Syrah, it's it's uh, it's just been so delicious. Um, in our tasting room, I, we have a, we have a strict rule not, not to open it and, and sample it because there just isn't enough to go around. Yeah, I bet. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, your Syrahs have always drank incredibly well. Always been some of our favorites for sure. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to look down here and see if, if anybody has any, uh, questions for Kurt, put them to the test. You have me so nervous, Ryan. Yeah, so I, wouldn't nervous. Be, I wouldn't be too nervous. All right. So there, can you see those, Kurt? Well, I read one. What are the major tasting notes from the Stoller Vineyard location? Um, a great question. Um, so the, the, the Stoller is, is such a unique site because it has such rocky soil. It, it has this high iron kind of reddish hue uh and produces very very uh uh low yielding vines we get i think our average 
uh, tons per acre is 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 uh, we do one ton per acre year over year at the Stoller Vineyard. So this is because the berries are very small. We've got uh, depleted nutrients uh, in the soil, and so the so the vines uh, have a very uh, tempered uh, growing characteristic, and they just don't produce much fruit. So we have um, that that famous uh, high. Uh, skin to juice or pulp ratio, which drastically influences the texture of the wine. So, so right off the bat, even without stems, uh, the wine has a a broader and 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 I think deeper tannin. Um, and the fruit profile, to me, it tends to be a, a darker darker fruited, like black and blue fruits, uh, um, but also more mineral I think than the other wines. Um, I discovered in, in 2013, this was the, f- the first year I trialed some whole cluster with Pinot Noir. I had done it in Syrah previously, but uh, I felt I was uh, making a big gamble with whole cluster and Pinot Noir. And I did it with the Stoller, and it was, it was so wonderful to see uh, what those stems did for an herbal complement um, in the wine. So you'd find if, <clears throat> if we were to taste uh, from 13 to current vintage, also a, a really lovely uh, spice and uh, extra earth. And I think a, a, a tannin profile that, that hits uh, m- more points on the palate, um, you might say, uh, compared to a fully destemmed version of the same wine. So um, that's a very long answer for a, a kind of simple question, but I would say uh, descriptors and notes um, I get bramble, mineral, uh, black tea, uh, maybe some boysenberry. Um, it's a really, really fun wine. We, we might, if we have the opportunity to have another live, Ryan, maybe we could include, include that wine. Yeah. I, I, I've always found that wine to be the biggest, the most powerful of your Pinot Noirs. It's, to me, it feels like the most age worthy. It's just like, just got, it's just a little bit denser Pinot than the other three vineyards in my, in my opinion, other it's two it, vineyards it, to me. Yeah. Well, I, I agree a hundred percent. It's, and, and for that reason, uh, we, uh, attempt to hold back a large, uh, portion of that production for a later release, uh, as, as the, those tannins integrate and the wine becomes whole. Um, I mean, it's just on a different trajectory than the other wines. It's just not, it's not right to, uh, re- release, the the Stoller 16 alongside the the English Hill and the Taylor which are more spelt and approachable as as youthful wines right uh, I, I I just love how how it, it it becomes kind of more in harmony and and more profound after uh even two two or three years so yeah so I saw a couple of questions go by and I'll kind of combine combine them and hopefully achieve uh an answer and a little bit more information I know a lot of folks have been drinking the 2014 English Hill Pinot, that's what's been around Tennessee a lot. Yeah. Um, and then now some folks are getting into the 16. Just, can you just give us like a brief rundown on the difference, any difference in winemaking between the 14 and the 16 and kind of maybe just a little bit different, uh, if you can remember kind of what those two vintages difference yeah. were. Uh, I remember, remember it vividly. Um, I figured you did. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they're actually uh, to to my palate. They're 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 uh, of course the wines have some similarities, but uh, they're they're quite different vintages. Uh, Fourteen, we had more reasonable yields. Um, I I'll just choose a number, something like two and a half tons per acre. We had in in twenty fourteen, where in sixteen it was uh, a fraction of that. Um, gosh, should we do? Uh, I think it was somewhere in the neighborhood of two tons per acre. Um, that, that, that seems seems higher than my recollection. But anyway, um, the six the sixteen vintage is I think a more focused texture. I get a, a, a kind of a, a firmer and more detailed topography on on the palate. Where the fourteen was um, a, a step softer. Um, I, I think upon release more approachable and elegant. Um, so it was, it was, 
um, it was really just a, a, a softer and, and I, I think lighter fruited uh, wine, the 14. And then in 16, again, the drought vintage, uh, more, more power, uh, certainly a darker color. Uh, and, and I think the, the, the feel and the, and the tannin on the, on the palate uh, corresponds with that lower yield that we had in 16. So maybe, maybe a little bit darker toned fruit, but for me, it's, it's really the texture of the wines. It's the, the big difference, firmer, uh, kind of broader tannin in the 16, it'll be a, a, a more age worthy Pinot Noir, uh, than the 14, but, um, I, I think it'll, <clears throat> Uh, reward those who can who can sit on a bottle or two for a few years where the where the 14 was just kind of a, a hit right out of the gate yeah gotcha yeah. that's that's great information 14s drink them and 16s 16s buy two cases and sit on one right we also got a uh, a wonderful review from uh jeb dunnock uh gave, gave this english hill 16 at uh, 95 points Oh wow, that's great to know. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So I, I think I think maybe the um the, the things I'm loving in the wine I, I probably he was enjoying too. Yeah. Yeah, that's enjoyable. All right, any other any other questions out there? All right. Somebody um Al Al, Al Lee, Lee stirring on the Chardonnay, is that what it was? Stirring. It, it, it depends who's asking the question, whether we're, we're going to acknowledge. It's I'm a, kidding. Uh, yeah, you, you, you're probably <laughs> mad, Al. <laughs> yeah, we do. And that's a great question, and I, obviously I'm joking. Uh, yeah, that's a good question, Al. Good job. The Yeah, I, I, I like to uh, stir the lees during, during fermentation. Uh, and on the Chardonnays, uh, again, we're barrel fermenting. Uh, so... <clears throat> And and they can take uh, uh, two months, three months even to to finish their their primary alcoholic fermentation. Uh, so uh, don't actually have a, a, a specific calculated uh, a program and regime for for stirring time, but it probably averages. Oh gosh, uh, we're, we're we're stirring every two or three weeks during during fermentation, and then. Finally, once the wines are, uh, go dry, and we 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 top them and and kind of nurse them through the malolactic fermentation, uh, we stop stirring. And uh, really, the intent there, um, I think, we're getting getting enough uh, uh, texture and and richness in in the wines we've found uh, by by stirring during during primary fermentation and not later in the wine's life that we decide that no that, that's that's sufficient uh for stirring for this for the style we we love and what we're going for yeah so so it's just early in the wine's life we're stirring but then later no gotcha awesome you have any other fun questions yeah, in there no, no, no let's see i, I was list i was intently listening to you i didn't see if any went by so if anybody else has any questions ask away yeah, this 16 is great. This uh, Pinot's, yeah. So, yeah, the 17, um, like the like the Chardonnays, uh, they're they're bottled, but we're we're uh, resting these these wines for another uh, couple months, I think, before release. Um, this, the 17 was a really fun, at, at, at least for the English Hill Pinot Noir, something to look forward to. I think it's, it's the most powerful of, of all the English Hill Pinots we've done since, since the beginning. It's, it's, it's darker. It's a little higher alcohol, uh, which I think I've been re reluctant to, yeah, is it? Yeah. Make, to make a wine like that. But, uh, but it just happened to, to ferment through to, um, um, something higher than the pre than the earlier vintages and and i totally loved loved the, the flavor and the the uh the in the wine and and so that's anyway it's something for us to look forward to gotcha any more 2012 syrah available mm. is that leah asking or is that no no we're, we're we're still pretty flush. We 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 worked the, through those pretty slowly. <laughs> I 
I mean, we pr probably have eight bottles left. So well, I'm, I'm glad uh, you have those. That's just one of those uh, very rare and, and special bottles. I think <clears throat> all told we may have, uh, oh, I don't know, five or six cases or something, but it's just such a, such a precious and unique wine. We're, trying to not sell it and really just just keep it uh keep it as a library wine and yeah uh, i don't blame you um yeah but if someone comes out to california and and we want to go around and uh check out some vineyards and and i'd be i'd be delighted to share a bottle there you go uh, and open it with anyone that's so that's that's the place to get it go go to occidental Go to the go go drive around with Kurt and see the vineyard sites and open a bottle of 2012 Syrah, which is Rick honestly, Watson has four. Huh? You see that? Yeah, he has he has four. I think I'm down to eight. Oh, and I got a mag. So that's that. But that's we're gonna sit on that for a while. It's it's the quarantine, Rick. We're not supposed to be hoarding. <laughs> four doesn't feel like hoarding these days. <laughs> not for wine. Oh, awesome. Yeah, that yeah. Uh, that that truly is a special Syrah. I think. I'm honestly not sure that I've had a New World Syrah that's anywhere like in that range. It's just, it's something else, something else. It's a great well, wine. Well, thank you. Yeah. It was, uh, all I right. Wish I, could, I wish I could take all the credit for it, but uh, you've probably heard it a thousand times. These wines are, they're a product of the place they grow and, and really the, the vintners uh, and the people involved were, were stewards and we kind of shepherd them along. So we're lucky to, lucky to work with these, these fabulous properties so essentially you just did a good job not fucking it up <laughs> wait can you repeat that yeah good job not fucking it up <laughs> <laughs> thanks thank you i heard you <laughs> all right uh unless anybody else any questions we've gone about 45 minutes and we'll wrap it up so thank you. Yeah, thanks thank kurt you. yeah i appreciate yeah. it man Glad, glad to see you're doing well, and looks like a crappy day in California behind you. Just a gloomy gray sky, isn't it? Yeah, it's actually raining here in Chattanooga, so that's okay. I got got a couple little uh, couple little bottles of sunshine I'm going to work on for the rest of the evening and, and snuggle on my doggy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, a rainy night's a, a good one for that. Yeah, absolutely. Buddy, good talking to you. Talk to you soon. Thank you so much for doing this, and we'll be doing more of it. Thank you. Likewise, you be well. All right, buddy. Talk to you later. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Thank you all who joined. See ya.